Midsummer, the longest day of the year and one of the major Swedish holidays. We celebrated come rain or shine, okay mostly rain, in Dionysian fashion with drink, food and dance, because we're basically heathens, masquerading as a modern society. I'm heading back home for a traditional celebration with my friends where we venture out into the countryside for some organised chaos of never going to bed and peeing in a bucket. <laughs> Amongst other things, we divide the labour between the hunters and the gatherers. I, I mean the domestic chores of cooking and decorating and the excursion to collect flowers and greens. The findings are used to make flower crowns. Sweden was way ahead of the curve there. And to decorate the midsummer pole. Then we spend some time arguing about whether we usually eat before or after the pole dancing. Now I know that sounds weird, but believe me, it gets weirder. We have this sort of argument every six months, the other one taking place at Christmas, about whether to eat before or after Donald Duck. Don't, don't even get me started on that one. The Midsummer Pole is essentially a phallic fertility symbol that we dance around pretending to be different animals and characters. Because, you know, heathens. <laughs> then we eat. The spread is plentiful, but the staples of meatballs, pickled herring and boiled potatoes are at this and every other Swedish holiday feast. There's a reason we're famous for interior design and not our cuisine. An essential part of this meal is to stop every 5-10 minutes to sing a rude drinking song followed by a shot of snaps. <laughs> education, the more songs you know. The old universities basically offer a second degree in getting pissed musically. Game time. Game time. Game time. Game time. Game time. There are a few classic group games to choose from, all of the small town carnival variety. Divided into teams, we race each other, hopping in sacks, carrying potatoes on spoons in our mouths, and the main event, Irish Christmas. <laughs> Or Norwegian drunkenness. Or Spanish drunkenness. A rose by any other name. Basic concept. You need to get really, really dizzy by spinning around with your head on a stick. Now there's a couple of rules. The stick has to touch the ground at all times. And there are a certain amount of times that you have to spin around. These and several other rules get systematically broken. It ain't pretty, but cheating is definitely a central part of this section. You have to be careful though. Make sure you don't cheat more than any other team, as us Swedes regard ourselves as honest people, and you might risk getting disqualified. Remember to respect your neighbours. Isn't it cute how they just gather around to stare at what's going on? Just dumbfounded by the display in front of them. Oh, and by they, I mean the humans. Obviously. <laughs> Strawberries and cream for dessert. Now some fancy people might have told you that it's meant to be strawberry cake, but it's basically the same thing. Consider our version a gluten-free deconstructed strawberry cake. After having warmed up with the dance and games, we are now ready for the more physically taxing drinking songs. <laughs> Tables go 
away and the dance floor is revealed. This is where my memory of events start to get hazy. Because, remember? <laughs> At some point during the brief hour of darkness, the fire gets lit and it stays alive as long as someone stays awake. And that varies from early morning to midday to late afternoon. More than once there's been overlaps between the stay uppers and the get uppers. When a get upper joins the stayers, we call that rallying. Other people might call it waking up for a new day. Technicalities. <laughs> Singing will happen. Sometimes it's pretty, most times it's not but we always believe it wonderful at the time. It's unfortunate when someone has video evidence that suggests otherwise. So I will refrain from locating those. <laughs> Eventually, we have all slept and it's time to clean. This is a fairly intense process interspersed with a lot of sitting and drinking coffee and trying to keep down breakfast. But we persevere and at some point, the more responsible of us have spent enough time sober to drive the rest of us to the coast and we have a little swim. <laughs> this will happen regardless of the rain or shine thing, but last year we were really lucky and it wasn't just refreshing, it was a gosh darn delight. And then we arrive at another Swedish tradition, mandatory for any day after a big event. A few of us linger yet another night for some board games and hair of the dog. Or rather, the small tufts of fur left from the kennel we brought with us the day before. And then it's time to say goodbye and thank the countryside for yet another year of silly wonderfulness and to count our blessings that cows can't speak. Because remember, what happens in Österlen stays in Österlen. <coughs> I mean, apart from me putting it in this video. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>